we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed the Church of Pentecost is possessing nations Church of Pentecost you yeah, far my now we have we are assuming that the first half of our term we have equipped the members i believe that every one of us understand what we mean by possessing the nation we just want to influence society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. But just equipping people does not mean that they will, they will deliver. So we want to intentionally unleash the equipped so we can affect our spheres. So in the second half, we want to unleash every member of the church to go out there and transform our world. So we are not saying transform the world, but transform your world. See, the word ecclesia is a borrowed term. That is what Alan Scott says. Sir, now ecclesia is a borrowed term frequently used to describe a community that is called out of ordinary life lawyers carpenters cooks Cooks. Ah, when you are no now nurses, and they are nurses for doctors, doctor for uh, every one of us. When we say the church, we are talking about people called out from ordinary life. So church is not limited to the clergy. The word church is the called out ones, called from ordinary life. Now, gathered together for the purpose of influencing society. And giving the authority to do so. Now, Alan says that to bring about change in the society. Anytime that we are talking about corruption, what the world will be asking is where is the salt? Where is the church? So let's take this definition. He is saying that the church is a borrowed term frequently used to describe a community that is called out of ordinary life, gathered together for the purpose of influencing society and giving authority to bring about change in the society. And you see, the church is of no essence to the world. We will not be found relevant if it cannot disperse darkness. Say, to me, So the clergy is supposed to raise all of us. And unleash us into our world to change it. So and bring joy to your community. You see, regardless of where you work or what you do, your job is your kingdom assignment. 
Your job is your kingdom assignment. You are not just employed. You are assigned. See, all of us have been carefully created by God. He has knitted us together for a purpose. So when you get born again, he, he also fills you with a spirit for a purpose. Now, when he assigns you a responsibility, so there you may think that you are just employed. But today I want you to know that what you are doing is kingdom assignment. Assignment is a specific calling to effect change in an environment. Now, we are not called to survive the workplace. But, but to bring transformation. Every one of us should look at your setting. You know, where humanity was filled with the Spirit of God. Exodus 31, verse 2 to 5. See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. Verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God and wisdom with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skill, to make artistic design for work in gold, silver, bronze, to cut and to set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craft. Now, let's pay attention to the verse 3. Verse 3. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. This spirit is capital S spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit. To do what? Not to cast demons, but to fashion things with his hands. Or say, Nabide, Nyankopon home home as any ma, and yes, sir, or the Sao home who will be two at home on it, there be, or they be yen yama, or they be a yadaso. And we are in the presence of God. Now you will Nyankopon him. So you can't say that there is a certain place that there is no divine presence. Now we carry him to wherever we go. When you are going to work as a lawyer, you don't excuse the Holy Spirit. You go with him. And I, I want every one of us to have this consciousness. That wherever we are, we must consider the place as a divine place for the manifestation of the presence of God. Because of that, this morning, I want to assume that all of us are in ministry together. We sent this apostle to Indonesia. Yeah, the Osmanfobico Indonesia. A population of about 279 million people. Just about less than two percent are Christians. Now, one do do a bear or pep a head. And I saw in a team, but this lady was not a minister or is not a pastor. And so, sir, obey on your software, and now be our because. But the spirit just moved her. And so home home the piano. So I want you to know that we are all in ministry together. And this and in this unleashing agenda, every one of us should allow himself or herself for the Holy Spirit to use to change your sphere. 
It's me pesauti as yes, ye na wa fray and yami to mem na embra ye ye pie wa nam ye see ma ho kwai na ho kron kron found ye to ma. Allow yourself for God to use. Ma ho kwai na nyan kopon and found ye to ma. I like the last song that the choir sang. Uh, what was it? Fu fru gumi kremo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mas. Maybe the first one to some will be nicer than this. But for some of us, these ones, we don't joke with them. If you have a movie pet, you have a deep kaito, and as you move it, you have a wave of saying, no, you have a fan yagro. Because it is He who makes us. Now he told Abraham that I will make you into a great nation. Abraham said, And he told the disciples, I will make you fishers of men. Now But God's men and God's women are made in the closet where they have time with him. When they are very close with him alone, he will fashion them. And makes them bread and wine for humanity. Na nyanko pon me mane ne mano wo ye wo e wo kukuem e bra we nyan bread eni onon kwa esia impuni impu e hona osiye siye wo e ma wo be e brodo eni anonye e me wiasi. Luke chapter eleven. Luca eti duba akon. How many of us want to be used? Let me see. Ye mo ahe ne pesa nyanko pon e di e ye juma. Fine. Luke chapter eleven verse. One. Maybe some of you want a topic, eh? So, <laughs> yeah. So all that I've said so far, uh, maybe it's introduction. But the body will not be long. The conclusion rather will be long. <laughs> Just open your spirit and let us enjoy scripture. The so the topic will be Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. So Luke chapter 11 verse 1. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Now, said, not teach us to do miracles. Not teach us to cast demons. Not teach us new methods of evangelism. But teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Now let's go back to the scripture. It says, one day, Jesus was praying uh, in a certain place. When he finished, so you can see that he was praying. And, and then, so this look is trying to bring to mind the fact that he spent some time Look at because he says when he finished. Look at so or two years or say or tell into your say oh yeah no. One of the disciples said to him, apparently the disciples were not praying with him. <laughs> Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. Teach us to pray. Now the book of Mark gives us some snapshots of Jesus' ministry. A picture of the seriousness and the agency with which he attacked in which he worked as the son of God. Now I want us to 
read Mark chapter 1 from verse 21 to 34. Mark chapter 1 from verse 21. Now you realize that this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry as recorded by Mark. Since that they went to Capernaum, Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. So Jesus was a teacher. The next verse. The people were amazed at his teaching. Because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. No, not, not like the scribes they were used to. This one's teaching was a bit different. So he was a teacher. That the next verse says this. Jesus, just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out. So this one, possessed by impure spirit, was in the synagogue. You see, spirits and evil spirits still live in human beings. And they come to church with them. Now, what do you want a bar? Sorry. Ordinary churches will not be able to exercise these spirits from these people. Now, da da, sorry, dear. Want me in two sa a home for me in free sunny pay. We need to dig deeper so that we'll be able to have the keys of the kingdom to help people like that. I will say a dress you call near your ahinian musafwa at me the abwa sunny pay. The next verse. Yet was so. What do you want? with us. Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Twenty-four. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. Now, so Jesus taught, he also cast out demons. 27. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority, he even gives others to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. 29 says this. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrews. Now free Shada in the Mono in Tamara, one in Yakubu, any Yohani, echo Simon, ne Andrea Fie. The next verse says that same Simon's mother in law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. Now Simon Aseba Afwedaho, na in Tamara, or can you want some etrel? So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her. And she began to wait on them. Now, how many of us who want Jesus to be our presiding elder? <laughs> but look at the kind of work he is doing. He teaches. He will cast out demons. He heals the sick. The next verse. That evening... After sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. Now, face I and you, Reno, or we are caught toy, you know, 
Waje woni a wo honya wo den ene woni a wo wo ahonhon moni nyina ebre no after sunset o wi akotoye no so what time is it o sha ya be i want you to look at how tired you will be after sunset meanwhile they are now bringing all the sick and demon possessed in the town to him we person who bra na wa bre sa o wi akoto na wo de woni a wo yare ni ahohun boni ase wo ma nyina ebre no no the whole town gathered at the door froni nyina ehia wo opon na no now when we begin to operate in the power of the holy spirit yes sha se di yakopo ahohun to me ni yet ma we will not be able to stop people from filling this house yet we see ni pa kwan se wo mra ha now when we talk about the church unleash we are looking at at a church that is not an ordinary church a church that is filled by the power of the holy ghost ye ka asoria we pie na me so a enya dada asori na mo masoria nya me to whom to me no ase wo ma and jesus healed many who had various diseases na jesus sa woni a wo ayare do ma hodo nyina ayare he also drove out many demons na fe wo tu ahohomoni pi but he will not let them let the demons speak because they knew who he was now wa ma ahohomone no kwan say won kasa e san say na wonim ni pa kwa oye now by this time he should be very tired sa pray there be sure na wa pray but look at verse 35 and so say e dia sanum no shall we read together very early in the morning while it was still dark hold it so what time is it where should we guess four four between three four okay what time do you think that he finished casting the demons and all that you, you don't have any idea but still very early in the morning while he was told that he managed to wake up left the house went up to a solitary place where he prayed now oh sorry ahemanache Every day, now oko estresso baby eko bom paye ewo ho. Now, why should he do this? I don't think there was so yes sir. He should be drained. His energy was actually drained. I was na ho dey swati. Yet while it was still dark, and so Brana assumed that so ho no. He managed to rise up and then go to a solitary place, a secluded place, and meet with God. Why should he do that? Why didn't he just want to take some rest? I didn't see that one in a home. The answer is he needed to. Now his action was driven by need. He prayed so much because he needed prayer. When I was presiding the PIWC Atomic, one day one of our elders preached and he made a certain statement I have never forgotten. He says that if Jesus, who is the son of God, prays that much, then what? What about you, son of man? Eh? If Jesus is praying that much, then what about you? What should you be doing? Or say, say yes, wa o ye nyang kopo mbanimpo o bompa ya to do say ya anya wo oni papa. Then I was a way. See Jesus, because of the flesh that he has put on, the humanity or this nature that he just put on, he needed prayer. Let's go to Isaiah 42, verse 1 and 2. Let's go to Isaiah 42, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah. Here is my servant. In fact, the whole of Isaiah 42 is talking about Jesus Christ. Isaiah it is a dwanai me ni na e kasafa Jesus Christ says that here is my servant whom i uphold my chosen one in whom i delight or say say makwa a mashano mpamden ye 
I'll put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. But let's take the one again. Here is my servant whom I uphold. Now God is saying that he is going to uphold uphold his servant. Now why should God uphold him? Because he was wearing humanity. And in that state, Jesus had to be strengthened by God. Now the word uphold means to support so Jesus needed to be supported now the word uphold is to defend against opposition now the word uphold is to keep from sinking now the word uphold is to lift up the word uphold is to sustain. So Jesus needed to have God to sustain him. In this human body, he saw himself weak and vulnerable and therefore needed God's help. Now he was tempted just as we were also tempted. Now, Or as we are tempted. Yet without sin. And Hebrews 4, verse 15 says this. Hebrews 89, Hebrews 4, 15. Hebrew 89, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. The only problem I have with this scripture, this version or this rendering is tempted in every way. Don't know what the lawyers will say about tempted in every way. Now, because Jesus didn't marry, so issues that has to do with spouses quarreling, he, he, he wouldn't have any idea. Yes, or, sir. So, I don't think that maybe it should be everywhere. The King James says that, let's go to the King James. For we have no, not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all, but was in all points tempted like us. We like as we are, yet without sin. We no say or no ne na kwa mu baby ya was so ne she to say dear was so yen so tempted in all points. Na che say baby ya was so ne she. But there are three points of temptation. And say wo mi ami en sa e ban so sha. The lust of the flesh. And it honam akono. The lust of the eye. And you are akono. And the pride of life. And it asets ne mwa huwa huwa. So this one is better. So as for all the points, he was tempted. But in every way, he was not tempted. Now, if the devil tempted Christ, he did so because he knew he was vulnerable. So Jesus Christ was not a person who couldn't sin. Yes, That is why he came as a second Adam. And Now, if he failed, maybe we would have had a third Adam. Sanka went to me. But because he overcame sin and Satan, 
He had to become the savior of the world. Now, we, he, we didn't need a third Adam. Now, if Jesus had to wait upon God for sustenance, then all of us who have been unleashed into ministry should wait upon God for strength. That is why the disciples will say, teach us to pray. Help us to know how to wait upon you. Just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus actually taught them. You see, it is in these solitary places these secluded places that God makes men and women useful for ministry. It is in these secluded places after all your qualifications the man of God or the woman of God effective for ministry is made in the secluded place. Not to make them great preachers. But God's men and God's women. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Oh, erade. Just as John taught us to pray. Now the book of Matthew also brings this same story or this same request and how Jesus answered the disciples. But I think that if we have to draw it into this discussion, it will help us a great deal. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 18. Verse 5. And 6. And in Matthew 6, 5 and 6. Matthew 18. And when you pray. Now say now. And when you pray. Now, if you can look on the screen, if you have just put something down. So and when you pray, not if you pray. Prayer is to be prayed. Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to be praying standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Let's move on. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. What is he trying to say here? When you pray, don't behave like the hypocrites. They love to be seen. Some people have a facade of a prayer warrior. But they don't pray. Sometimes as their wives. You as their wives. <laughs> My firstborn, when he went to Tech came back with a story. He said that when they went for prayer meetings, these young guys, someone will hold the waist, others will lift their, their legs and put them on chairs and be shouting, hey, hey, hey. Then he said those days, he was confused. He didn't know how to be shouting and be doing all that. And so people felt that he didn't know how to pray. Hey, hey. So I told you, so what did you do? He says, after a while, I had to join them. <laughs> had to join them. But you see, some people, what they just do, 
is for the public to see. But they are not prayer warriors. And so, so Jesus said that when you really want to pray, enter into your room. He's not just talking about the room, but enter into your closet. Close the doors. And pray to the Father who sees in secret. I saw you holding a phone. Can I have your phone? <laughs> this is a gift for, from somebody to you or what? Okay. Now, when we are praying, you should know that it is a supplicant before his or her God. And that period and that setting ought to be respected. Many times, especially these days, when we are praying, you see the elder. Your anger, yeah. He's, he's supposed to be before the Almighty, yet there is somebody out there who is still requesting his attention and he is responding to that person. So, this kind of things we do is irreverent so far as God is concerned. Many a times, let me look at the lady's face, especially the woman. When we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do is to reach out for our phone. And let me turn and look at the young man. And they reach out for their phones, trying to respond to WhatsApps. What you want phone, where is she? Or by reply, what's up? Their whole attention is taken from the Almighty. And before they will say Jack, they never read the Bible, they never had time for God. When you pray, enter into your closet. Real prayer is difficult to pray. Prayer is difficult. You see, because whether you have a phone or not, you can decide that this mind will be in your kitchen. So, but close every door and stay with God himself and God alone. That is what we mean by prayer. If you practice this for a long time, you will see that there's a difference between how you relate to God or how God relates to you. Even the feeling that you get in prayer will change. Say, if I dream way, only phone cry, why dream a bit me our baby and our baby for fro? And so the air can I set to a plony name, not my wife dream in seeing Yanko Ponquaso. Now, so we away at what was so I will be on say, only Yanko Yanko Pontem, I uncle Fano, a moo ado. What is a facade? Say, I can't insure any more, and I'm not true, yeah. And now, obedient, I dare be cut on any side of a building facing a public way. There are so many beautiful houses that you enter. So we want, we don't want our Christianity or our prayer life to be like this. We really have to have time with God so that we will be able to exchange our strength with that of God's. Now, prayer is communication between the supplicant and his God. But the most important benefit of communication 
is relationship. And so you can't nip on them in kita hudia di hiya pa ene ayonko fa. When we say communicate with your wife, it doesn't mean just talk to your wife, but as you communicate, you build relationship. So you can't say only when you're in in kita huwa ene in kita huwa biya keke nebo munya ayonko fa bi. Prayer is participating in the divine nature of God. And by so doing, we exchange strengths. That is why the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And in that sense, they are changed. And then they will be able to mount up with wings like an eagle. I am praying that we all begin to wear the strength of God. And then participate in his divine nature. So that it will be men and women that God can use. Luke chapter 5 verse 16. Luke chapter 5 verse 16. Luke 5, 16. Okay. Do I have it here? No. Look at it in num in Chichemu Dunsia. Now so or chain a hook or a stressor cobom pie. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Now yes, you or tired train a home. Reading scripture starting with but is not too good. So let's take maybe verse 15. And then yet is also not too good. So then is also not too good. So let's start from here. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then the next verse. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer sacrifice. Let's go to 15. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So here is a man casting out demons, healing, and then the news about him is spreading. People are bringing the sick. Let's read 16 together. But... Now, the bat means that this is a conjunction. Instead of continuing healing and touching the people, he left them, he will often withdraw and go to where lonely places and pray. Because he finds this as important. Very important than just lay hands on the people so that he will be depleted. No, he has to refill. All of us who want to be in ministry like Jesus will need to create a closet where we will we we'll meet God for God to strengthen us. Now, who says sad ye, some pie boy, a who here pan, a yen ya yen yami to menina, a yen yan, or say yen yapre, a massad ye, a yen kwan yan kopon, a shia kokwe. Now, Luke 6, verse 12. Luca, it is yan to chemu do me, no, no. Yeah, we rise a bit and read this one. Luke 6, verse 12. Those of us who can. Okay, ready, go. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spend the night praying to God. Now, this is Jesus. Spending the whole night praying to God. Look at this, our building. I used to live somewhere here. Some, some years ago. And I used to come here for prayer. The place was not as nice as it is. We used to have a caretaker somewhere here. When I enter here around 9 a.m. One of these days, around 4, 
He came to me and said, Oh, so for order so high, but where should I go? Oh, Baba, no, Naya, or say, Hey, or so for order so high, no, I have a hen of men Where should I go? A hen of men When we were boys, a young rantier, we will make sure that we have a spare key to the church house. Na ya bomo de say ya ibenya ya kasa ya safwa e ma sori dan no Please you stand and listen to me O de jina hoka kranati Standing to you is healthy E ye se u be jina hoka kra When we close from church in the evening Say a poor asori and yumrena The prayer team led by myself and will pa- come back we will go and eat any food at all. But we will come back. Pray throughout the night. Around four, we will go and rest and still go to work. We survived. Here am I. I'm not dead. It's me. If we really want to experience the presence of God, we need to go back to those days. Just follow Jesus closely. Praying the whole night. One day somebody came to him. Master, can I go with you to your house? Then he says, Forces have holes. Bears have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Why? In the night, he will be up there on the mountain. Now listen. The kind of world that is confronting us, ordinary Christianity will not be able to to attack it. We need something very supernatural. Now, please sit down. Do you know that Daniel was not a pastor? When you say that, you know that Daniel on your sofa. Do you know that Daniel and his friends fasted on leaves for three years? What do you say, Daniel? Now, a man born of a woman, the Bible says that they sought an occasion to find fault with him, but they could not. I remember Daniel fasting for three weeks Daniel for his nation and for his people. Daniel was not a priest. Daniel And I want to challenge you. Now you don't need to be a priest. to stay up all night praying. Now what's not You don't need to be a priest. Now, as the Church of Pentecost. Say. Church of Pentecost. As the pew of the Church of Pentecost is becoming much more knowledgeable. Don't let us sacrifice that which has given us strength. We need as individuals to stay with the Almighty God in our closet for strength. Are we together? There was this man who was called William Wilberforce. A friend of William Wilberforce. He was a reformer. And he was burdened with the slave trade. And he wanted a liberation for these poor people. He made this statement and I want us to interact with. Let me just say this before. Lack of closeness with the master can lead to leanness in your soul 
and ineffectiveness. All of us are supposed to be effective wherever we are. But lack of closeness with Jesus in your closet can lead to leanness in your soul and ineffectual ministry. Let's listen to William Overforce. He was not a preacher man, he was a legislator. And this is what he said many years ago. This perpetual hurry of business and company rules me in soul, if not in body. Cobra, over trying. I say, Sada Bia, Masuaya say, I may yet to my, I may pray me why yet to me. I say, a same cra, say, and say, me nipped the answer. This perpetual hurry. I have to wake up early. Or some sorry term. Or else. And yes, sir. He's saying that it is ruining my soul as well as my body. More solitude and earlier hours, I suspect I have been allotting habitually too little time to religious exercise, such as private devotion and religious meditation scripture reading o se e was say kokwamu ayon ko fam ni yakopon won e was say e bi be ka ho na e ya ye se emra me wo ma sa nieme se making kind me tresem ana me kwa me ni yakopon e nya ayon ko fa no ana me jinju yakopon asem ho no e so te let's move on hence i am lean cold and hard when I joined the ministry, I had the shock of my life one of the days. We were having pastor's retreat. And our original head by then had asked all of us to be fasting. So we were fasting. Then, right after the morning session, when we had to just go and take some rest and return in the afternoon, I saw that some of the pastors were eating. Now, you hear, and your coffee at home is said, you are best about it. I feel me who said, I saw for you, BDD. So I went to one of them. It's me called back on chain. You are eating. Who did he? When that person said we should fast, as my first say and should come, he looked at my face. What's your name? So I would have been a one by and two. You just came. <laughs> you are new. I was surprised. Hey, you are eating. Who did he? Then this other person told me that we have been fasting. Ah. And about consecrate him say you are three come sir. Then I went on to ask that, how did you see the message? Because the message was very good. And then this one who was eating did not respond to that. But his friend, who was also preparing his Gary, guess Gary, oh, said, we, we know them. We know them. We, we know them. You, you don't know them. You know what, what he is trying to tell me? You are saying that you are preaching good. As for us, we know them. I felt I felt very defeated. I thought I could convince them to stop eating. But I realized that I could not. And then when I said, the preacher man did very well, and he said, we, we know them. It means they didn't even follow the message. Yeah. 
They know them. So, I mean, you, you, you are a newcomer. Why are pastors saying this? Do you know why? They are lean. They are cold. They are hard. Elders can do the same thing. Members can do the same thing. Lack of closeness will make you lean. Will make you cold. Who says that members don't love to come to church in the evening? Why in say members and parents you may sorry but they come. Waba. They come. Waba. They actually do not enter here. But they come. And so waba. Especially new converts. Because you told a new convert that Wednesdays we meet, Fridays we meet. And they, they, they held to that. So around 6 30, they'll come and walk around. They'll peep. They realize that they are no leaders. Who say, can you for be anyhow? So they'll go around and come back around seven. But they realize that you don't find them. Who say Not that they don't come. And yes, I won't. But they don't have people to lead them. All of us can grow lean. We can grow cold. And we can grow hard. It, it will just it's stemming out of our Lack of closeness with the master. Are you, are you here? Oh, Let me just take this one and then I'll end. Our devotions are not measured by the clock. But time is of essence. And so a brehu here. The ability to wait and stay and press belong essentially to our intercourse or dealings with God. Now say a base me a train naya ya pem so esia ewo nyanko poenim no and no ena ebe boy ewo yene na yonko pem. Short devotions are the bane of deep piety. Calmness, grabs, strength are never the companion of hurry. Short devotions deplete spiritual vigor. Arrest spiritual progress. Sub spiritual foundations. Blight the root and bloom of spiritual life. I met this young man. Monsieur No, you. Ah, uh, <laughs> Monsieur Abranti. He has some perfume on, on his body. Oh, I do some beer or you going home. So I hugged him. And see, me bam no. For about five minutes. Me bam the best menu. When I left him. Me ja no no. I carried some kind of scent from him. But I hugged him for five minutes. I'll smell like he smells, but just for a while. When I met him again, I stayed under his armpit for one hour. I stayed under his armpit for one hour. I stayed under his armpit for one hour. I will carry the scent for a very long time. So even though 
we are not marking prayer with the clock. Time is of essence. And so, the people you see in the Bible who did great things and prayed short prayers in the public, they were great warriors in the closets. I came this morning to wake you up. I came because of you. Because of the possessing the nation, Sergeant. I came to say that if you allow yourself, God can use you. I came to say that if you can stay with God for hours, then your, he will change you and you will change your situation. You went to pray with this brother, a friend. He was going to marry. Then he says that we should pray for a woman who has calf. Calf, one and two. We should see a one and two. ah, Those days, we didn't have the knowledge we had today. Otherwise, we'd not have gone praying for a woman with calf. So I decided to help him so he can get a woman with calf. And a friend of mine also joined us. For three consecutive days. We were in prayer. We were fasting to you. What But do you know that in the midst of all supposedly foolishness, when we are living the presence of God, He will still bless us. And so when He say, "Sir, yeah, 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 you will just look at us and you will tell Gabriel, Gabriel, look at this voice. <laughs> <laughs> they will shake their head. But they will say, anyways, what, what can we do for them? <laughs> when my friend was going to marry, Madame I was far away in my first station. Now the two So I couldn't participate in, in the wedding. Intimate then when I had time to visit Kumasi, and to visit you, you know what I went looking for? Oh, but I was surprised. After all the prayers, when I saw the lady, I said, oh God. Eh? Look me there cry. <laughs> Even mine is better. Uh, but, <laughs> but when we are going home, See, eh, God will still bless us. Just because of our availability. He thinks that these are young men whom I can use. If they can spend three days praying for calf, <laughs> if, if they have the understanding, they can spend seven days waiting upon me. So that's why I came to pray for you. 